I did not like this episode of AEW. Do you want to talk about the ratings? Yeah, well, that's what I was going to say. I understand a bunch of other people didn't like this episode of of, uh, AEW either. What were the ratings? The overall number, 901,000. So down about 100,000 from last week that... uh, that also had the incredible pattern, as we said, it was better for them from start to finish because they waited till the end to see the Briscoe tribute, correct? Last week. That is correct. They stayed all the way to the end, bucking the trend. We'll see what happens this week. Of course, traditionally, the women's match in around 930 drives off a lot of people and they don't come back. Let's see what happens. Segment one. By the way, this is uh, the chart I'm looking at was done by Brandon Thurston at WrestleNomics. Segment 1, 8 to 8.15 p.m., Moxley versus Hangman Page, including picture-in-picture, 1,065,000 viewers. And they were, uh, they were at 1.2 at a start last, last week, so that's down as well. And maybe their lead-in was down. So let's see where it goes from here. Segment 2, which is the last four minutes of Moxley versus Page, as well as the post-match angle, and Darby Allen's video, 1,015,000 viewers. So they kept them, pre- only lost 50,000 for that backwards match. Uh, that's not bad. Segment three, including the Jamie Hayter, Bunny, Soraya, Tony Storm, and Britt Baker backstage angle. Yeah, that's what I skipped. And the acclaimed having a match and then a confrontation with the Gunn family. Also, Jack Perry's live promo. And the beginning of Brian Cage versus Takeshita, 995,000 viewers. Okay, well, then they've only lost another 20,000. So they're actually the 65, 70,000 viewers from start to end of quarter three. That's much better than normal. Segment four, maybe the problem with putting people that fans really like, the most hardcore fans, but the other people don't really know yet on your show. Segment 4, 8.45 to 9 p.m. The continuation of Cage versus Takeshita, including including Picture in Picture, as well as the Jericho Appreciation Society promo backstage, and the big angle with the Elite and the Firm, 849,000 viewers. Oh my god, so that is... 146,000 people decided the same thing that I decided, that Brian Cage can't fucking wrestle. It was Cage versus Takeshita, who, again, AEW fans really like, and I've thought he's really good, but to the average person, they don't know him, and he's wrestling against someone they've proven they don't care about, and then after that, the Jericho Clowns, and then the Elite and the Firm? There's your answer. But let's go to segment five, nine to nine fifteen. Brian Danielson versus Timothy Thatcher, including picture in picture, 853,000 viewers. Well, they kept what they had and got 4,000 back, but that's, again, you know, do they have a bigger star than Brian Danielson that they could put at the top of the nine o'clock hour to keep people's attention? No, not really. <sighs> well, 9.15 to 9.30. It's a, it's a pity they missed a good match. Segment 6, 9.15 to 9.30, which is the finish of that match, as well as the angle afterwards with MJF. I missed this. Dustin Rhodes and Swerve Strickland's video. And then MJF and Rush, or Roosh, having a backstage angle. And then the beginning of Jade versus Red Velvet. Oh, boy. With picture in picture. 815,000 viewers. Ooh. Okay, so all of that fall to raw lost 38,000 more people. Segment 7, 9.30 to 9.45 p.m. The final four minutes of Cargill versus Red Velvet and the post-match. And then Britt Baker, Jamie Hayter, and Ruby Soho's backstage promo. And the beginning of Darby versus Samoa Joe. 783,000 viewers. Oh, Christ on a cracker. That's another 32,000 people. So they are now down 280,000 people from the start of the program and finally segment eight 9 45 to 10 p.m darby allen versus samoa joe with picture in picture eight hundred and thirty thousand viewers 
So they actually brought another 47,000 back to see. And I was actually going to say maybe it was a, a better thing for him if nobody saw that match. Better for Joe. Nobody saw him struggle like that to land that fish. But The 8.30 to 8.45 segment from that to 8.45 to 9, going from 995,000 viewers to 849,000 viewers. I don't know if there's been a drastic drop like that lately. It was sharp. Um, and again, they, they finish up at one point, as I said, they were down 280,000. They finish up at what? 200 and no, wait a minute. They were almost down almost. Yeah. 280,000. And they finish up 200 and what is that? Goddamn math in my head. 235,000 below where they started. Hmm. That's 25% almost. So we, we and we we did this on uh, what was the uh, the drive through is your show. We did it where we talked about the raw numbers. They lost people in in hour three, especially because it's attrition and fighting sleep at that point. But they still don't lose that big a percentage. They have bigger audience swings because the overall aggregate audience is bigger. But this is they just can't get people to stick with this program no matter what they put on last unless it was last week and it's a tribute to somebody that everybody was interested in seeing so unless it's something people are actually clamoring to see with all due respect did anyone want to see another Samoa Joe Darby Allen match I was kind of looking forward to this episode because of the Moxley Page thing they've been building up that match let me down Danielson versus Thatcher I didn't like it as much as everyone else this was the one match we've seen a few times. Darby didn't show himself as TV champion as someone who's going to get people to tune back in at the end of the show. Remember, they tried him at the end of the show for several weeks. Right. Got no star power. Whatever you want to say about Moxley, like you and I have said, we don't get it. He at least gets a little bit of a number. Jericho's not pulling any numbers. Danielson's not pulling any numbers. Maybe if you put stars against stars, it'll do something. But for everyone that says Tony should try to do something with CM Punk, here's the biggest argument. Not even that he's still the biggest merch mover or anything else. You need stars. And where are you going to get any? Somebody needs to hit him in the head so he can see some. He could see stars, but can he hear stars? Well, that's the question. And I'll tell you what you need to hear, folks. You need to hear what you want to hear. You need to hear what you like and what you want to hear and what you want to tune into. Because that way you're going to be in your own little cocoon, and you're not going to have to worry and stress and fret about the outside world. Whether you want to listen to podcasts, whether you want to listen to music, whether you want to listen to, I don't know, political propaganda, whatever the case may be, the everyday earbuds from Raycon have you covered. And right now, Raycon is offering those wonderful everyday earbuds, premium audio at the perfect price point, that's what they call it, and, and they also have, have you heard about this? Have you read about this, Brian? Low latency gaming headphones. I'm just sick of dealing with the latency issues when gaming, and uh, this makes perfect sense for me. Well, I always knew that, uh, the, do you have to leave a lot of fingerprints when you game? Leave a I lot guess of fingerprints? You, yeah, the latent fingerprint section. I've always heard about them and the uh, criminal uh, documentaries that I watch. They they pull those latent fingerprints. So now the you're pulling these fingerprints off the games or off the headphones? Well, why would it be off the games? Wouldn't it be off the controller? You don't play the game. You put the game into the system if you well, still actually have a physical unit. Controller is part of the game. Nevertheless, they've got the earbuds. They got the low latency gaming headphones. They got a speaker with a battery that'll last all night. They got all this stuff. They're the kings of audio. And right now, if you go to buyraycon.com, that's B-U-Y-R-A-Y-C-O-N, raycon.com, you can see all this stuff. And of course, the premier, premier product we've been talking about for so long, the everyday earbuds, the ones that look great, sound great, feel great. And as a matter of fact, now they have the not only the three customizable sound profiles, so you can jack up the bass or the treble or the whatever. They've got the earbud tap functions, the noise isolation, the awareness mode. But now they've got a buy now and pay later option. 
so you can buy them now but not have to pay for them till later. And you can even listen before you pay. But if you don't plan to pay, sooner or later, you're going to have to pay the piper. And we've talked about the customized gel tips for the perfect, comfortable in-ear fit. You've told me that they're not, that gel is not meant to be consumed by humans. So I stopped making, you know, uh, jello, uh, jello bombs out of it in the, in the refrigerator. Although the strawberry gel tips were my favorite until you told me to stop eating. Will you stop it? Don't even encourage people or fool people with that. Do not consume the gel tips, ladies and gentlemen. I don't think we should have to say this again. So before you eat the earbud, take the gel tip off. Don't eat eat the the earbud. Put the earbud in your ear where it could be your ears bud. Well, and it'll be your ears, but it'll be your ears lifelong friend. You get eight hours of playtime on the everyday earbuds. You get 11 hours of playtime on the everyday speaker. You know why they call it the everyday speaker? Because you need to listen to it every fucking day. That's right. Get up in the morning and get it over with because it's going to call you. If you go to bed without listening to that speaker, it'll come on in the middle of the night and it'll say, come over here. Listen to me. I'm an everyday speaker. You didn't listen to me today. They're water and sweat resistant, too. Were you aware of that, Brian? I was aware of that. So you can just jump right in the pond or the pool or the tub or the whatever. Pond? Who jumps in the pond? A lot of people jump in the pond. You've never gone swimming down over at Miller's Pond? You don't stick your head under the water. How are you criticizing what I do at Miller's Pond? Other people other people would swim in ponds. I didn't like swimming in ponds, not because I didn't want to stick my head underwater, but because I never wade barefoot into a pond. I don't know why this made me think of it. Do you support throwing change into a well or a uh, body of water or making a wish? Well, yes, that's an old tradition. Okay. I especially support that if it's one that I can get access to after hours and clean it out at the bottom. But I'll guarantee goddamn to you I will never walk into a body of water that I cannot see the bottom of uh, barefoot. So I've I never I've swum in lakes and ponds and even in the ocean, but I've never go in barefoot where I can't see the bottom. Just so you know. And you should not do that either, but don't put the Raycon wireless everyday earbuds or the everyday speaker, don't put either one of them on your feet and and wade in to water that you can't see the bottom because they can't protect you. Even if you might think they can, but they can't. But if you do put the earbuds or the everyday speaker into your ears. Well, it's hard to put the everyday speaker into your ear. It's a little big for that, unless you got big ears. But if you stick any of them in any of your orifices and jump in underwater, they're waterproof. So that means you won't drown either. They will it save doesn't you from mean, drowning. It doesn't mean that. Don't jump into a body of water if you don't know how to swim. Well, if the earbuds are waterproof, that means they're still going to... That means they'll survive. Still- they're still going to work. Well, if you can still hear what they're saying or what they're playing, that means you're alive. So as long as you're hearing that, you can't die. So if you're <laughs> underwater, you're safe. You're not going to no. drown as long as you're wearing your earbuds. No, that is wrong. You can, in fact, die and drown. And the only part that is correct is the Raycon earbuds would still be playing. But you'd be well, dead boy, and not hearing anything. I tell you what, when they drag your bloated fucking carcass out three days later, it's still going to sound lovely. But right now, folks, go to buyraycon.com. I said that's B-U-Y-R-A-Y-C-O-N.com slash J-C-E right now before they hear this spot and cut this offer off. And you're going to get 15% off your Raycon order. Anything, the, the buds, the speakers, the buds, the stems, the leaves, anything, whatever they got on the site, if they sell it, you'll get 15% off of it at buyraycon.com slash J-C-E. That's what exactly you ought to do. And speaking of doing things, Brian, while we're on a roll here, what the fuck's going on over at the wrestling news section of Arcadian Vanguard this fine week? That's right, Jim. Another Action Pack Week on the Arcadian Vanguard Podcast Network. Get information about all the shows on Twitter at Super Podcasts or on Facebook at facebook.com slash Arcadian Vanguard. A few notes. Of course, we want to remind you about The Wrestling News, your free daily wrestling newscast every morning coming at you with all the news, none of the opinion. Check it out today. TheWrestlingNews.com to download direct. 
or look for Arcadian Vanguard's The Wrestling News wherever you find your favorite podcasts. Once again, every morning, get your free wrestling news from The Wrestling News. I've, I've heard it's, it's gratis. It's gratis. You, you pay nothing. Like so many of those CDs that I sent so many people throughout the years. <laughs> but it's gratis, that's right. Also want to remind everyone about Shut Up and Wrestle with Brian Solomon. This week coming up, his guest on the show will be Keith Elliott Greenberg to discuss the life and legacy of Lanny Poffo. Check that out, suawpod.com. Or look for Shut Up and Wrestle with Brian Solomon wherever you find your favorite podcasts. And of course, the 605 Super Podcast, The Mothership. Well, thank pitiful, you Pitiful, just pitiful. It sounded so much better when we did the previous take, but we couldn't use that one. But we, we can use this one, and you can go through the archive today at 605pod.com, available wherever you find your favorite podcasts. The 605 Super Podcast. The Mothership! Oh, God damn it. Oh, that one hurt. Oh. <sighs> That's my vocal cords. Well, you'll be useless for the rest of the program. Keeping in line with the re- the three hours and whatever we've just done. All right.